All right, what's up everybody? So we are back here in Vegas. You can Hi. talk, you can talk. Yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're here with our buddy Arthur, the one that shot our very first training video together, the one that you guys all love. So we're back here with him. And we are here to surprise our dear friend, also another trainer, specializes in glutes too. So if, you know, Vegas area, hit him up. Savage Fitness, and um, we're, we're here to surprise him because he surprised us in Miami. So we decided to come surprise him. She has a shoulder workout today to do. So this is gonna be a shoulder workout that we, I, I've never been to his gym before. So it's gonna be from the top of my head. So this will be a good, bleh, this will be a good video for you guys to, to, to watch because you know, when you guys travel or if your, your gym doesn't have certain, you know, machines or weights that, you know, we have, you could use this as influence to, you know, just change things up and keep that going in your shoulder routine. So with further ado, we're gonna go in, surprise them if we can, and we'll start out the workout. Peace. Massage right now. Is she here? Yeah, she's in there giving someone a massage. Oh shit. Well, Nikki's coming for a massage, right? Twelve. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <Dude. laughs> Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? And then we're gonna go to two free motion exercises, and that will be one more set.
address, but I'm going to have her do side lateral raises with it seated. So she's going to be over here, and she's pushing or pulling the weight away from her body and not bringing it up. And then she's going to control back in.
I see that they have a Viking press. I'm gonna go check that out because I personally love Viking presses because I'm so lazy. Yeah, you never done? Uh-uh. I do them because I'm so lazy to put the bench and roll it to the Smith machine, find out the accurate, you know, level of incline, and then putting it in the middle between so you're straightly perfected or then adding the weight. Fuck that. I'd just rather just roll stand and just put some. That's why I do it. Nah, but in all reality, I like to do them because it's an easy setup, so you're not, you know, wasting energy on that, and then you can align your body a little bit perfectly more than with the chair. So we'll give that a try right now. Delts on your show on your shoulders, glutes on your shoulders, bills everywhere, everywhere for your tits, too. Come on! 
ones, twos, three, four, five, three more, three, Seven, one more. Up, eight, drop it, two. Now you can do five. So I met with the cluster set yesterday. We did hip thrust, same principle. You go heavy and then you go for five reps. 20 second rest, then five, eight. Ready, set, go. Five, four, three, come on. Two, one more. Up and rack it. That's one cluster set. 15 seconds rest in between each one. My second one. No, so the first one is a five to eight rep, and then you start your cluster set of five of eight cluster sets of five repetitions. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Two. Can you play the Jeopardy music. The lives of smile. Already make me smile. You don't need Just 
burning out the shoulders at the end with awkward, unusual movements that you don't do for bodybuilding. Like we'll use the rope because she hit up her shoulders and when you do the battle rope, you use your shoulders, but it's not a shoulder workout. But when you fatigue your shoulders from weight training and bodybuilding type of uh, style of training, and then you finish off with you know the battle ropes, which I'm gonna show you, which you could target the shoulders, then you'll see the way you could benefit because all these movements, they hit like surface muscles that you do to present on stage, but then all these in like intricacy muscles that are not hit, are used when you do like functional training uh, exercises or you know like even doing a push-up or like a plank to a push-up you recruit oh, different yeah functional yeah whatever I don't fucking know whatever just weird shit exercise that we don't bodybuilders don't usually use and you add them into your you know ex uh, exercise routine at the end especially when it's specified for your goal it will work wonders so we're gonna finish up with that and I'm, I don't think I've really shared that yet, no? So, yeah, first time. So she's gonna do another set, 20 side by the way, and then 20 partial. Specify and like just think about one form of training. Like, I just research and like look up every form of training, whether it's sports, endurance, sports, I don't know, whatever, fucking rehab, rehab type of shit, and like just all training methods. You never know, you might find something that could benefit your training style or a client's training style. Or maybe when you get fucking old and you can't lift heavy fucking shit, you're gonna be like, oh, remember that YouTube video back in like. 2020, like, oh, I could try that, and then boom, guess what? It applies to you when you're older. So, knowledge is power. I feel like this is like a good place to just plug in our, like, how you came up with, like, the, the idea of, like, my, getting my lean to my, you know, talk. Can't talk. How to get my leg leaner, um, leaner, but without being stringy and just bring up more lines, so, First thing he thought was like, wait, that's what you need. Okay, who like what sports have that? So the, yeah, because she's out of breath. So what she's saying is, 
for the critique that she had, she needed to bring down her legs. And what I've been seeing is that a lot of top athletes or trainers, they say, all right, don't train legs. But now when you don't train legs, you're gonna look like shit on stage. So you're gonna display two things of shit with just good conditioning. But you're not gonna have those detailed lines inserted in those muscles because you're not training them. So, when you train them, you don't have to use weight. You can make body weight feel like a thousand pounds. And this is where, you know, experience comes into play and, and like um, the knowledge as well, where you can make a lunge, one rep of a lunge actually feel like a thousand tons over your shoulders if you perform with the right cues for that specific type of training. And then on top of that, you could use stability balls or stability plates to activate deeper muscle fibers so you don't build by, you don't do the workout by using dumbbells or any type of resistance. But now you're still training the muscle, but you're not building it. You're making those lines more deeper because you're hitting those intri intri the intricate muscles that you don't primarily hit with dumbbell presses or anything like you know, just compound lifts, you hit those other muscle fibers by st stabilizing and other shit. So now you're building from the inside to the outside of the muscle instead of outside to the inside. On top of that, then she also, we also include her foundation movements as well. So now you're hitting both at the same time, but we're doing it in a facet state. So she's not building, but she's still reserving it because she's also having her, uh, what's the supplements that you take from HP? or her HD supplement, so now she's not in a catabolic state 100% of the time. So it's all, you know, theory, but it's been working, so I'm, it's working, so why not? It changed my cardio, like, you know when you were like, oh, I, I have to look at all the sports and be like, okay, take away from oh, yeah. like, an open-minded. Yes, that. so when you look at sprinters, they have huge asses, huge legs. So for cardio, I'm not gonna tell her to do sprints, but I, I, I don't coach the cardio. I, I was just giving some input into the cardio regimen. So when you see long distance runners, they have spaghetti legs, but they have lines in their legs. And I'm thinking like, why is that? Because they do so many little minor steps, little tiny steps constantly, and the impact of their body weight with the impact of their legs landing on the ground are like little tiny, little reps. So that's why they have such long, deep lines inside their, their legs, but they're skinny as hell. So you put that into play, and, and then you're like, okay, well, that's the case, and then if she sprints, she's gonna get bigger legs, which you don't want. So she was doing an incline walk to reserve muscle. So I told her now, you have 30 minute cardio, do 15 to 10, 10 to 15 minutes of a slow jog, and then the rest, do your regular cardio, and it's been working. So theory into practice, it's working, so why not? Oh, that is. So, yep. Somebody that one up? Yep. Okay. This one, so I don't Ready? Go. And switch. Come on, come on. Now drop it. 
this is what I want you to do. Jumping jack. Okay. And then you're done. Then she's done. She's gonna do jumping. Everybody can do jumping jacks back home, but now you have a rope in your hand. Yay! <laughs> These are gonna suck. Go! Now she's using body weight and momentum to raise the body. The rope up. Keep going. See how she can get him up? She's using her body now. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Five, four, three, two, and time. Good. Done with the workout. That's it. That's done. We're done. Now she has to do cardio. Yes. There's my shoulders. <laughs>